Is it your first time renting out a property to Section 8? What should you know? Let's break it down. All right, y'all. This cat right here, uh, I don't know. I can't really pronounce your name, brother. I'm sorry. Gulshan? I don't know. He was posting on a uh, real estate uh, forum, Bigger Pockets. He's like, hey, guys. I need some advice on my first rental. My agent said it might be worth renting out to Section 8 tenant, and he was able to convince me. Do you guys have any experience on Section 8 tenants? <laughs> oh, you bet your ass we do. What were your experiences like? Are there any additional clauses I need to put on the lease agreement? Example, taking care of the property, timely payment of their portion of the rent, etc. All right, brother, let's let's unpack this, okay? There's there's a lot. This is a super vague question, all right? And I can't obviously answer everything you should know about Section 8 in one little video here. We're probably going to talk for 5, 10 minutes maybe. So, uh, you know, it's a very all-encompassing topic. So I highly recommend you tune into Holt Lies TV because we, we eat, le eat, sleep, live, and breathe Section 8 all day. So, like, you know, this is... That's like saying how long is string, right? You know, this is just an ever-evolving topic. But I could definitely get you started, brother, getting you talking about some stuff. First things I want to talk about here. Uh, is it worth renting to Section 8, right? If you have a rental property, should you go Section 8? Should you not go Section 8, right? Uh, th there's a lot of opinions out there on Section 8. Some people say it's great. Some people say Section 8 tenants are the worst. And then the majority of people are just fucking confused, right? I happen to not be confused, right? I happen to have made millions of dollars with Section 8. But I will tell you, anybody out there telling you like, oh, I got super rich with Section 8. It's the greatest thing ever, blah, 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 blah. They're fucking lying to you because they're trying to sell you like a course or something, right? Now, I have made millions. I help people invest in Section 8. I help people make a lot of money. I make a lot of money, but I ain't going to lie to you, dude. It is a tough business. Section 8, if you're going to be a real estate investor, Section 8 is like a tool in your tool belt, right? Uh, if you got a nail, the proper tool is a hammer. If you got a screw, the proper tool is a drill or a screwdriver, okay? So you would never want to hammer in a screw. Same thing with Section 8. You don't want to utilize Section 8 in all scenarios. I don't know much more. Uh, actually, I don't know anything more than what this dude posted on Bigger Pockets. Uh, so let's just break this down. My agent told me I should go Section 8. Okay, maybe that's good advice. Maybe it's not. It depends. It depends on the property. If you have a property in like a major metropolitan area, bro, and you're like at the median level of income, at the median level of uh, housing values or above, no, you would never want to go Section 8. You only want to go Section 8. Uh, if you're at the like the lowest end, right? Because when you're like at the middle or above, okay, you are in neighborhoods where you can attract a tenant base that is by and large going to be much more responsible than Section 8 tenants. These are people that typically do not damage your property as much as the Section 8 tenant does. They have better credit scores than Section 8 tenants. They're more responsible than Section 8 tenants. They're less entitled than Section 8 tenants. Your property is such that you could attract those people. Those people, by and large, statistically speaking, are going to be better tenants for you. Yes, there's bad actors, bad apples in every scenario, right? But you have to look at averages here because we're trying to mitigate risk, right? You, you, you know, like any, you know, yes. Could there be like a dude who's got a 750 credit score and a good job and he turns out to be worse than this one Section 8 tenant here. Can I pick out an outlier? Of course, right? But, you know, we don't have crystal balls here, so we're mitigating risk, folks. So when you're mitigating risk, by and large, nicer neighborhoods, median level and up, Section 8 tenants, not the answer. But when you get into super low-income neighborhoods, your neighborhoods where the crime, up, uh, poverty, up, your concentration of sex offenders, drug dealers, hookers, drug addicts, transients, right? Your concentration of all that stuff is much higher. In those areas, your Section 8 tenants actually pose the least amount of risk because in those neighborhoods, the consistency in which you're able to collect rent from those types of people, much lower. Section 8 provides you an alleviation to that risk because you can collect rent from them every single month. So like in that scenario, you need to understand that your Section 8 tenants will be the, le the least risky, right? So that kind of answers your second question of like, what do I need to know about Section 8 tenants? Well, you need to know that they're high-risk people. 
Section 8 tenants, by definition, are incredibly irresponsible. I'm going to get the haters who are like, that is so offensive. Well, fuck you, Susan. It's just fucking obvious. It might fucking hurt your little woke heart uh, that I said that, but you know what? I don't live in fucking woke land with goddamn fucking unicorns, okay? I tell it like it is. Of course they're irresponsible. If they were responsible, they would not be on Section 8 because they'd have a fucking job in being, and they would be paying for their own family to live. These are adults who are too irresponsible to pay for the roof over their own head. So by definition, they are more irresponsible than the average person. I'm sorry that offends you, but like that's just, that's the way the cookie crumbles, bro. So, uh, they're going to be pretty irresponsible. But again, if you're in a super low-income neighborhood, the whole tenant base is going to be made up of irresponsible people, uh, so they, they pose the least amount of risk to you, right? So the main thing for you here to understand, uh, Gulshan, is it really is going to be dependent on the quality of the asset that you purchased and the quality of the location that that asset is in, right? The lower the quality of what you own the more likely your Section 8 tenant's going to be a good tenant. The higher the quality, less likely you want to put a Section 8 tenant in there. And then uh, some other stuff you're asking, like, uh, should I be putting stuff in the, the lease, like uh, taking care of the property, timely payment, etc.? Well, first of all, bro, your landlord, Section 8, non-Section 8, what in the hell kind of landlord has a lease that doesn't tell people when they're supposed to pay the rent? Any landlord needs to have a lease that says when you're supposed to pay the rent. That is, like, literally... Like, the most important, like, that is, like, item number 1A. Hey, this is the rent amount. This is when you need to pay it. This is what will happen if you don't pay it. You need that in any lease, folks. There is no scenario where you should rent a property to anybody. Section A, not Section A. It don't matter. You always got to include how much they got to pay, when they got to pay it. You never mess with that. And then, of course, you're going to want to discuss like things that they cannot do to your property. You're going to want to put that in your lease. You're going to want to put that uh, in any lease for any tenant. Like that is just like standard operating procedure. But going beyond that, reading between the lines, I think you should know if you are in that low-income space, that Section 8 tenant space, let me give you a little news flash, bro. Most of the time, these people don't even read the fucking lease, okay? They really don't read the lease. You want to have this stuff in the lease, so in the event you take them to court, you have things that back you up. But, like, there's, like, you know, you give out leases. They're, like, 10 pages, dude. You get a lot of these people. They're not really le reading the lease. But, yeah, you still want to include that. Uh, but, like, if you look at, like, a lot of Section 8 tenants, like, they're probably not going to take care of the property, uh, to your level of expectation. I would imagine a lot of brand new investors are not uh, exactly informed on like what a house looks like after somebody on Section 8 lives in it for like five years. Uh, if that's you, if you're out there and that's you, I highly suggest you pay attention to the Tenants from Hell show here on Holton Wise TV because that's what we do. We show you that. And based upon the comments and stuff we get on all those videos, a lot of people, they're like shocked. Their eyes are open to like what the reality of being a Section 8 landlord is really like. Uh, and it freaks a lot of people out. And I will say to you, if you're considering investing in Section eight properties or not or if you're considering buying low-income properties if you're out there and you're like dude i want to buy like a thirty thousand dollar house in detroit okay if you're thinking about that i would say before you spend that money take the time to actually watch some of those videos where we show you the rough tough stuff and see what you're getting and then if you watch a bunch of our tenants from hell videos where i show you poop on walls people getting evicted freaking Terrible human beings just doing stupid stuff that's like beyond comprehension, right? If after you watch that, you're like, oh, yeah, I, I, could, I got the stomach for that. I could still make a whole bunch of money doing that because I'm going to factor that crap into my numbers because I'm buying houses for pennies on the dollar. I'm all about that. Then I say, great, Section 8 is probably good for you. Uh, investing in super cheap properties is probably good for you. You'll probably make money and be happy. I know I am. Uh, or... If you watch that, you're like, what the hell? I would lose my mind 
if I found out that somebody did that to my house or I can't believe somebody would treat my property that way, that's a non-starter. I would be sucking down Pepto-Bismol all day. I'd be up all night. I couldn't sleep. If that's you, I would say, bro or ma'am, get your ass out of the ghetto. Do not buy cheap houses. If you watch that and you're like, holy crap, I could never deal with that. It don't matter what market you go into in America. Stick to the median income and value level or above because you ain't cut out for the low-income space. And if you ain't cut out for the low-income space, you ain't cut out for Section 8. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.